Okay, with this question we're dealing with um, price elasticity of demand and income elasticity uh, with an example of Taurus t-shirts. This is taken from Drew and Wells, uh, Microeconomics, second edition, chapter 6, which is the chapter on elasticity, uh, question 8. So uh, the question asks, uh, the accompanying table shows the price of yearly quantity sold of souvenir t-shirts in the town of Crystal Lake according to the average income of uh, tourists visiting. So here you got different prices uh, and given an uh, income uh, these are the quantity demanded of that income and then given this relatively higher income you see the relatively higher quantity demanded for, uh, given these prices. Okay so question A it asks, uh, well there's two parts really, uh, so here's the first part um, Using the midpoint method, calculate the price elasticity of demand when the price of a t-shirt rises from five to six dollars and the average tourist income is twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so highlighting this little, we're dealing with just people earning twenty thousand dollars, so I've just taken that portion of the demand curve here. Um, also recall, well, what is price elasticity of demand? Um, price elasticity of demand is the percent change in demand given a percent change in price. So how much demand is going to change given a change in price? If you change price by a dollar, how much does demand change? That's what, what the price elasticity of demand is calculating. Um, and then we're told, you know, use the midpoint method. Um, um, so why the midpoint method? Well, uh, given when you calculate the percent change, um, given how you calculate that percent change, you know whether you use when you whether you compare it to like an initial starting point, uh, or you compare it to uh, where the price ends up, or um, if you use this midpoint method, you might get a different number for percent change in demand. Um, so the midpoint method is just one way th that we're settling to uh, determine to calculate these percent changes um, in either demand or price. Um, I guess, simply put, there are different ways to calculate percent change, um, and the midpoint method is, is one way that uh, kind of balances out uh, possible issues um, with the different ways of calculating percent change. Okay, so now, um, given our price elasticity of demand midpoint method calculation, which is here, um, we so this first part up here is the percent change in demand, so quantity demanded, um, how it changes from quarter one to quarter two, period one to period two, uh, and then the denominator is the percent change in price, so going from price one to price two, uh, we're gonna calculate this out. So let me let's do that for you right now. Okay, so let's take over our little equations. Um, so we're going from five dollars to six dollars. So at five dollars, the quantity is sixteen hundred, uh, and then at dollars, the quantity is twenty four hundred, So the denominator here is 16 plus 24 by 2. So in the denominator we got 2,000. Um, and then 1,600 minus 24 is negative 800. So there's 0.4. Uh, so this was a negative 800. However, um, when we are dealing with the price elasticity of demand, you know we're not we we don't deal with uh, negative numbers, so you can just drop the negative sign. Um, calculating the percent change in price. Uh, so period one price is five. Period two price is six. I'll fill all this in for you. So for the percent change in price, when you go from $6 to $5, uh, you have, it's going to be equal to uh, 1 divided by 5.5, which is 18.2%. Um, so the price elasticity of demand here is going to be 0.4 divided by 0.182, which is about 2.2. 2. 
So the price elasticity of demand going from when the t-shirt price rises from $5 to $6, uh, given a tourist income of $20,000 is $2.2. So, uh, so uh, what that means is given an increase in price by 1%, we expect the percent change in demand to be a de decrease of 2.2%. So 1% increase in price leads to a 2.2% decrease in quantity demanded. Cool, so let's move on to the second part of part A, which is, um, so also calculate the uh, price um, elasticity of demand given a tourist income of $30,000. So for this, we're simply going to use the same equation, but change. Uh, we're using this tourist of 30000 This. So we're going through the exact same calculations, but with a tourist that earns $30,000. So I'll just show you everything I do here. So now it's going from 5 to $6. So the whole percent change um, a price is going to be exactly the same, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. But quantity demanded is different, so we're now going from uh, 4,200 quantity demanded to 3,000 quantity demanded. And then let's see, 1200 divided by 3600 is 0.33 or one third. So we got one third divided by 0 0.182. Leading to a price leading to a price income elasticity of one point eight three. So what it means is given a one percent increase in price, we'd expect a one point eight three percent decrease in quantity demanded. That's the price elasticity of demand. Okay, just to summarize what we got in part A here, so with the price elasticity demand for the tourist with an income of 20,000 was the 2.2, you know, so given a 2 given a 1% increase in price, we'd expect a 2.2% decrease in quantity demanded. Uh, and then the price elasticity of demand for a tourist with an income of $30,000 is this smaller 1.8. So that is to say, given a 1% increase in price, we'd expect um, quantity demanded to decrease by 1.8%. You can kind of see that this is hinting at the income elasticity, the income elasticity, um, because this higher um, income earning person is willing uh, for the higher income person, uh, they're less responsive to price changes, you know. So this higher income person uh, decreases their demand by a smaller amount than the lower income person. So it's basically summarizing that um, as income increases, these consumers are less responsive to changes in price. Uh, I think to drive that point home, we're moving on to part B, which asks the following question. Using the midpoint method, calculate the income elasticity of demand when the price of a t-shirt is $4 and the average tourist income increases from twenty dollars to $30,000. Um, so let me set that question up for you. Cool, so send this up again. Uh, we're just dealing with the $7 price for t-shirts here. Uh, and we're comparing from a $20,000 person to a $30,000 person. Um, first off, what's the income elasticity of demand? Um, the in income elasticity of demand is how much um, demand changes given a change in income. Uh, and to solve this, we're told to use the uh, midpoint method. Uh, so the, the nitty gritty details of that is this portion up here, which is the percent change in demand 
given a percent change in income. So filling in these data, let's do the following. So income is going from 20 to 30,000. So Q2 is this 1,800. Uh, and the initial quantity is 800 um, associated with a person making 20,000. And then for income, the income we're going from 20,000 to 30,000. Now, simplifying all this a little bit, uh, I'm just going to skip ahead to save some time. Cool. So skipping here a little bit. Well, first off, I want to notice, point out that uh, I'm answering the second part of the question first. Uh, so sticking with $7, uh, I'll get to the $4 part in a, in a second. Um, so the percent change in quantity, given that change in income, is uh, 1,000 divided by 1,300, which is 0.769. Uh, and then the percent change uh, of income is going from, let's see, is just 40%. Percent change of income is an increase of 40%. So the income elasticity is 0.769 divided by 0.4, or 1.92. And then how do we interpret this result of 1.92? Well, it's telling us that given a 1% increase in um, income, we expect quantity demanded to increase by 1.92%. Um, and anything greater, uh, anything positive for uh, if any good that has an income elasticity of demand that's positive, we say it's a normal good. Uh, when it's negative, it's an inferior good, something like spam. Um, this normal good, because the income elasticity of demand is greater than one, we call it um, income elasticistic. So something closer to a luxury good. That is to say that uh, demand for it increases faster than income changes. Okay, and then um, this question I was dealing with price seven. So I'm gonna quickly go through it at the price of four uh, for you right now. Cool. So we're dealing with this section here. When the price, um, when income rises from twenty thousand to thirty thousand, quantity demanded at four bucks goes from three thousand quantity demanded to five thousand quantity demanded. So let's find the income elasticity of demand given that lower price. Cool. So uh, this income percent change is exactly the same, 40% um, increase in income. However, this whole section is going to be changing. Um, here we're going from 5,000 to, actually we're going from 3,000 to 5. So you got 8,000 here. So we have 2,000 divided by 4,000. So this is going to be exactly 0 0.5. This is going to be 1.25. So the income elasticity of demanded when income rises from 20,000 to 30,000, given the price of $4, gives us an income elasticity of demand of 1.25, saying that when income increases by a percent, uh, quantity demanded increases by 1.25%. And then comparing the two income elasticities of demand, you know, for uh, when price was at this lower price to when price is at this higher price, um, I don't really think there's too much intuition there. Uh, this question is just more of like a nitty gritty, grind it out, get the solution for elasticity question. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.